Vision Forward's In Focus team presents. Hi, this is Luke Scriven here at Vision Forward, and welcome back to another In Focus Tech Talk. In today's Tech Talk, we're going to be looking at another aspect of computer use as a low vision computer user. So uh, strap in and get ready for that. But uh, just before we do that, please do like the video if you enjoy it. And if you don't, you can give it a dislike. And also, please do subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every Friday. And so you'll definitely want to uh, keep up to date with those. So hit that subscribe button. But that's enough talking for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at our computer. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the Windows desktop and the Windows search bar. And these are the very kind of basic elements of your computer. The desktop is the first screen that you're going to see when you turn on your computer. And it's a screen that you can always come back to. And on the desktop, we have a number of small, what we call icons, which are basically pictures. And those pictures will allow us to quickly find and open certain programs and files on our computer. So they're a very convenient way to find things that we commonly use. Now those icons are usually located to the left hand side, but if we're using screen magnification, we might not see them. If I just go ahead and zoom in here. And what happens when we zoom in is that our field of view is reduced. So we don't necessarily see the whole desktop anymore. So we might need to move our mouse around in order to find those icons. Now, like I say, they're usually located to the left. So if I move my mouse over to the left, and we're going to go ahead then and see that we have all these icons here. And I have quite a lot. And like I say, those are little pictures and underneath them, they also have words and the words will tell us what the icon is for. So some common ones, for example, would be this PC, which is a place that we can open to uh, uh, view the different files on our computer. And here we have the recycle bin, and this is where uh, files that we delete will go to. And down here we have Microsoft Word. This is a common uh, word processing program. So we have these different icons, and if we double click on them, then they will go ahead and open. So that could be opening a program, or it could be opening a file or whatever. And because they're always there on the desktop, they're very easy to find, and that makes it them very convenient for us to use. Now we can actually create our own desktop icons, and we're not gonna look at that in this lesson, uh, but that means that we can easily create shortcuts to different things on our computer, which is very convenient. And those icons, we can have quite a lot of them, as we can see here. I've got uh, quite a few, and there's plenty of extra space on my desktop over to the right here if I wanted to add even more. And so we don't you know, want to clutter up our desktop, but we definitely want to put the things which we commonly use right there on the desktop. Now, if we look down at the bottom of our screen, we're going to find something called the taskbar. And this will always be at the bottom of our desktop. By default, we can actually move it, but it's very likely that you're going to find that it's at the bottom of your desktop here. And there's a number of different areas to this taskbar. And so if we just take a quick look here, we have a kind of square button in the bottom left. We have a white box to the right of that. Then we have a number of little pictures again, similar to the icons that we've looked at on the desktop. And then we have some other kind of strange little uh, <laughs> symbols here. And we're going to get to all of those things. But for this lesson, we're just going to look at two things. And that's the button in the bottom left and the white box next to it. So the button in the bottom left is called our start menu. And the start menu is a place that we can go to to view all of the different programs on our computer. So it may be that we have shortcuts to programs on our desktop. But it might be that we're looking for a program and there isn't a shortcut to it on the desktop. And that's where this start menu can be useful. So if I go ahead and click on that with my mouse and it's opened up this menu here. And what we have on the left of this menu is an alphabetical list of all the programs on my computer. And I can scroll through this list and find a particular program that I want to open. And then I could click on it and it would go ahead and open that program for me. So very convenient, especially because it's listed alphabetically, we should hopefully uh, fairly easily be able to find what we're looking for. 
Over to the right of that alphabetical list is just some commonly used programs. Here I have um, some different Microsoft Office programs like Microsoft Word and Microsoft Outlook and a couple of other bits. And we can actually add, again, we can add programs to this list to make them easily accessible. So that's uh, pretty useful. We can also open that menu by using the Windows key on our keyboard. And the Windows key, um, it is to the left of the space bar. And it's probably going to be two keys to the left of your space bar. And it looks kind of like four uh, white squares. If you press that, that would also open up the start menu here. So uh, a couple of ways that you can open that up. Let's close it for the moment. And let's just take a look at this search bar here. And so the search bar is where we can search for things unsurprisingly. And that could be searching for things on our computer like files or programs. Or it could be searching for things on the internet. We can actually do that right from our search bar here. All we have to do is take our mouse and click into that search bar. And then we have to type in the thing that we want to look for. So let's say that I wanted to look for Word, which is a word processing program. I'll type in Word and let's move the mouse up here and we can see that it found Word right here. This is the best match that it found and I could go ahead and click on that now and it would open Microsoft Word for me. So uh, anything that we want to search for on our computer or even on the internet we can type into the search bar here which makes it a very powerful tool for us to use. So just to finish off today's lesson let's go ahead and figure out how to shut down our computer. That's obviously something very important. And we're going to go ahead and use the start menu for that, which as I had said before, is at the bottom left. So we'll go down there, we'll click on the start button. And uh, towards, uh, just kind of above the start button, once we've clicked on it, we will see that there's a number of different options here. And the bottom option is power. If we click on that, we will have a number of different options for what we want to do next. We can make our computer go to sleep, uh, which means that it's still on, but it's kind of resting, the screen is turned off, it's not using much power. We could also shut down, which would completely turn off our computer, and obviously that means it's not using any power at all. Or we could restart our computer if we wanted to. Um, sometimes you, you need to do that, uh, but for the most part, you probably don't need to worry about that too much. Now I actually have a couple of extra options here at the moment, update and shut down, and I also have update and restart. Windows will automatically download updates, and updates are basically little improvements um, that are uh, given to you by Microsoft that make Windows work a little bit better. Those should automatically be put onto your computer, as long as your computer is connected to the internet. But in order to install those, your computer has to be shut down or restarted. And so if you do ever see an option to update and shut down or update and restart, you can go ahead and click on one of those. And that means that your updates will then be installed and it will make sure that you are completely up to date with your copy of Windows. So I think that's enough for today's lesson. In the next lesson, we will take a look at some of these other things in the taskbar down here. All right, that's a good time that we had with our computer today, learning some great computer skills. And uh, we will be releasing more of these videos. So stay tuned to the channel. Like I said at the start, if you did like the video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, then give it a dislike. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And we release new videos every Friday. Now, if you do have questions about anything in this video or any other assistive technology questions, please do get in touch. You can call us at 414 615-0103. You can email infocus at vision-forward.org and you can visit our website at vision-forward.org. But that's it for today and uh, hopefully we shall be seeing you in the next video.